What's up, y'all? <clears throat> Welcome to my uh, th third day of doing this vlog. I'm starting to get used to it. Um, but for today, uh, for today's topic, what I wanted to talk to talk about, to, to ponder about, and share my thoughts, I wanted to talk about um, faith and self belief. Because in life, if you want to achieve anything, um, you have to have a tremendous amount of faith and self-belief in yourself. I mean, it's common sense, you know. If you don't believe in yourself, you're not going to do anything in life. You know, my, one of my favorite quotes is, you know, uh, you know, with, you know without faith, anything, everything is impossible. But with faith, everything is possible, you know. Um, and for me, you know, I know for a fact the only way I've able, I've, <clears throat> the only way I've, I've made it this far in life is because I've always believed um, in myself and I've always believed that I can achieve anything I put my mind into it. And, and for today, I wanted to kind of like maybe re reverse engineer of how I develop my faith in, within myself because, I, I mean, I never, I never took the time to think about it. I know a lot of people always, people that know me, people that meet me, they always realize I'm, I'm a really confident person. I always believe in myself. And... Uh, you know, I've always had the optimistic attitude that, you know, no matter what happens, how bad life gets, you know, tomorrow is always going to be a better day. And I think I've always been like this, but I wanted to kind of just think about my life right now of uh, how I started in Tonga. Well, I think the reason why, I think how everything started, you know, in Tonga, you know, when I grew up as a kid, you know, I wasn't a uh, I wasn't a big kid when I grew up as a kid in Tonga. You know, when I grew up, I was like a little scrawny, a scrawny little skinny kid. So, so, um, you know, I never had a lot of confidence in myself growing up because you know, uh, you know, my brothers, you know, were pretty strong themselves. So I was I'm the youngest in my family. So when I you know when I grew up, you know, most I was my parents had me late. So all my all my siblings were already older. So I was kind of like by myself when I was born. So I had I had to kind of bond with my cousins. So I never grew up with my brothers and sisters like that because we were just so f far apart when it came to our age. But growing up as a kid, I was kind of I was skinny and scrawny. So like you know, uh, like any other kid, you know, that grew up you know kind of uh, weak. You know, you had to figure out how to to <clears throat> you know you had this like chip on your shoulder that you had to prove to yourself that. You know that you can prove to everybody that you're not a scrawny little kid. That you can, you know, you can be like everybody else. You can, especially Polynesians. It's such a masculine, uh, you know, uh, culture, right? That you know, we really put our uh, males into a. Uh, we really proud of, pride ourselves uh, as males as you know being, being masculine. So, you know, I had to grow up trying to prove myself, and I think that's the beginning. That's like the seeds of beginning of like me. Just feeling like I had a chip in my shoulder that I had to, I had to prove to my not only to myself but to my family, that you know I'm not just a little scrawny kid that I can I can join the big you know the big boy table. So, um, yeah. So I think that's where it started. So, um, I remember. So I grew up as a skinny kid in Donga. Uh, I mean, but the one thing I've always had as a kid, I've, I was always kind of like uh, you know smart. I was always kind of uh, intellectual, uh, even at a young age. I know, uh, you know, I was always kind of top of my class, even when I was in Donga High. I was kind of really good at school. Uh, you know, I've always, I was always interested in learning. Uh, I think, I, I think I get that from my mom's side. My mom is pretty smart. Um, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so I've always, I've, uh, so when I came, so I've, like I mentioned earlier, I grew up in Donga. Uh, my grandma told me to come to America. I was hella excited. I was like, yes, let's go, baby. You know, um, opportunity for me to come out here to experience the, uh, you know, the American life, the American dream. So I come out here. And of course, uh, uh, you know, of course, you know, come here to, come here to America. And of course, uh, I go to, I go to school. And I realize that, you know, uh, you know, it's a whole different world. It's a whole different um culture when it comes to American school system um, than, uh, than Tonga, you know, at least in Tonga, you know, you're around Tongan, so 
uh, you get to you know, it's easy, easy to make friends with everybody. But here in in uh, America, you had to like figure out which group or you're part of, of as far as like the social class dynamic in uh, in high school. So you know, I went to high school in Dickinson High School. It's a uh, it's a high school in Texas, right? So you know, I went in. You know, of course, most you know Texas, the little school that we we're the school that I went to, and they had you know me and my uh, me and my uh, and uh, my cousin, um, uh, we were the only, we were the only, uh, we were the only Tongans or probably Polynesians in probably the whole city that I can remember recollect. So going in there, uh, I remember I went in there. I was trying to, so of course I'm trying to fit, fit in. I'm trying to become like everybody else, just like every kid in high school. And um, uh, I realized everybody was uh, was playing uh, football. All right, they were playing football. You know, that's like the most, uh, that's the thing to do to be a male. And I guess that's the masculine thing to do. And plus, like, you know, that's the best way to make friends, new friends, is just join a, join a sport and then I'll be teammates with everybody. So me and my, uh, you know, me and my cousin, you know, we decided to join football. Uh, so we uh, we joined the football team. And, uh, you know, to, for me, I, well, in the beginning, I wasn't really good at it because, you know, I just started learning the, learning, uh, learning, learning the, the game itself. But um, I started playing football in my sophomore year, uh, junior year, senior year, and then when I graduated uh, high school, I came out here to uh, to, the, to California, moved out here to San Francisco, San Bruno, and then um, of course I, that that's the time when we had to figure out um, how to go to college, um, to go to college, and of course my family we didn't have money for college, so the only way for me to go to college was to either you know, um, I was either the only way for the only way for me to go to college was I need, I needed a scholarship. There was no way my parents was gonna uh, my parents or family was gonna afford it. So that's I remember that time I really wanted to go to college and um, I didn't. I told myself that I didn't come out here to America not to go to college because you know, at that time you know for me I I, I associated college with like success like you know you know of course that's one of I think that's one of the Main main things that um, that uh, a lot of kids suffer nowadays is they they think that if they don't go to college they won't be successful, which is absolutely not true. Um, you don't need a college degree to, to succeed. You don't need a college degree to determine your worth and value in society. Of a college degree, a college degree is no indicator of your potential or talent or how far you go in life. Um, but in my mind at that time, um, that's what I thought that you know. If I don't go to college, I'm not gonna make it because my dream was to come out here to America and to be successful, and I, you know, I had to make it. So I made that one of my goals in life was to um, to be successful, was to go play, go to you know, go to college and graduate and play football. Uh, but backtrack back to in high school when I came to America, I was a, scr- a scrawny little kid, and uh, the one thing I love about football, it you know, I was able to physically work out and physically grow. To become stronger physically, because that's one of the things I always hated about myself when I was when I grew up as a little kid in Tonga. I was I was so skinny. I remember high school, my sophomore year, I was like 105 pounds, soaking wet. Man, I was hella skinny. I was hella small. I know a lot of people meet me now. You know, you know, I see my you know see did all this hubness, swollenness. <laughs> um, you know, they see me now, but they don't realize like as a kid I was really really small and uh, really skinny. So that was my first time I told my, I, I, I think that was my first commitment. I told myself, you know what, I am going to become strong. I'm going to physically uh, become a stronger, uh, become stronger and bigger. And I told myself I was going to do it. I, I, so I guess that's my first goal I ever tried to pursue in my life. And I did. I remember I was 105 pounds in, in, uh, as my sophomore year in high school. I remember that summer going into my uh, junior year. I literally, me and my, uh, me and my, uh, my cousin, we literally lived, eat, breathed, slept in the weight room all summer long, even the spring before the summer. That's all I spent my, every single day was working out. I was working out every single day. I was working out not only at the high school, uh, I was working out at home. We had a little gym. My aunt, I remember my auntie, shout out to Lissy and Mark. I love y'all. Um, I know it's been a while, but, <laughs> but I love y'all. But um, they bought us a little uh, weight set at the gym, uh, at the garage we, where we lived at. 
and I used to work out every single day because I just made a commitment to myself that I'm going to become strong. And there's nothing that's gonna stop me from becoming strong. I, I I ate everything. I tried. I ate as much food as I can. I I literally just spent my whole high school years just working out. And by the time I graduated high school, I went from 105 my sophomore year. My junior year, I was like to 225. I grew like 120 pounds in the summer. And then by the time I graduated high school, I was about two 250. And then uh, of course. <clears throat> And 250 solid, you know, I'm 250 pounds, uh, you know, with solid muscle. And uh, just had to put it out there, you know, kind of, of course, proud of myself. <laughs> but um, so I came to, came to, to San Francisco. Um, I came to San Francisco. I decided to, I was going to play, uh, I wanted to get a scholarship. And because I really wanted to go to college, I wanted to prove to myself that I was going, that I could become successful. Just like any Polynesian kids, you know, my mom, my family didn't have the finances to support, to able to pay for my, to pay for college, and I, that's when I, I think that was the first time I took destiny, I took destiny into my hands because I think that's one of my favorite quotes in life. You know, people to succeed, they create their own destiny. You know, you don't let your circumstances determine your decision. You let your decisions uh, determine your circumstances. Be a product. Of your circumstances, and I'm sorry, be a product of your decisions, not your circumstances. And that, I think that was the first time I, I made a commitment to myself. I'm going to figure out a way to go to college. And a lot of people in my family never went to college. Uh, my older sister was the only one that went to college, but everybody else didn't go to college. So I grew up. I grew up with cousins and family members that never went to college. Um, so like there wasn't a lot of support, and there wasn't a lot of encouragement, or there wasn't a lot of belief that I was able to go to college. Especially, you know, uh, being an immigrant, you know, especially just coming from Tonga, you know, what are the chances of, of a kid coming from Tonga and earning a scholarship, a full ride scholarship to go to college and live the American dream? There was like that, like the, 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 the chances of that happening is slim to none. But that was the time that I just decided to, you know, I made a commitment to myself that I was not only going to physically become stronger, but I was also going to get a scholarship and go to college because I didn't just come here to the United States just to be average. Like I made a decision, I was gonna become something, and make something out of my life. So I went to uh, enrolled in City College of San Francisco. It's a it's a junior college here in San Francisco, and I played two years, and I was able to land myself a scholarship, a full ride scholarship to go play uh, for a D D one AA school in Hampton, Virginia uh, University, and that's one thing I always tell people is like, you know you. Faith, faith is something that you don't, because a lot of people always ask me, like, how do you have faith? Like, how do you develop self-confidence? How do you develop faith? To me, faith is just like a muscle, and self-confidence is just like a muscle. It's something you have to work on every single day, and you just got to keep working at it, because what happens is as you work on as you work on it just like a muscle, it just grows. Like a muscle, like, if you never work, if you never work on a muscle, if you never exercise, exercise your muscle, it's never going to grow. So you have to, it's all about faith. It's all about daily repetition to make sure to keep doing the things that you actually believe in. And what happens is when you put in effort and focus and, and uh, work towards what you want in life, you steadily and progressively achieve small results and get closer. And, and what happens is as, you, as your muscle grows, it, just, you know, it gives you more confidence that it can grow and you, and you become more confident in your own, on your own muscle and your strength. And the same thing with faith. You know, I had, I had, you know, I had faith that I was going to come here to America and decide that I was going to become physically stronger, and I did that. So when I achieved my body, that I, was, I was able to go from 105 pounds, small, skinny, skinny kid, to 240, 50 pounds, solid muscle. That gave me faith that if I can do, if I can achieve my body physically, I know I can figure out a way how to get a scholarship. And of course, you know when you when you're looking for opportunities and you're looking for uh, for things to do to be successful, like you just gotta you just gotta take what you have and utilize and just use the opportunities that you have. You know you can't pick and choose what kind of opportunities that are given to you. You just gotta make the best what I have. You know I didn't get a scholarship out of high school, but that didn't deter me from believing in myself that I can get a scholarship. A lot of people, a lot of I see not a lot of, I see a lot of, I see a lot of high school kids now that if they don't get a, if they don't get an offer. From high school, they like they, they give up on their dream that they can make it. You know, they can get a scholarship to play football, 
uh, at college because be, just because they didn't get a scholarship or didn't get a D1 scholarship uh, in high school, uh, coming out of high school. Like, part of life, like, like I said, part of faith is just, is just believing that you can just, it's just, it's just taking action and just utilizing all the opportunities around you. If, like, one, if one way doesn't work out, you just got to try another way. You just, you just keep trying until you find something that works for you. But that's what faith is. is faith is all about repetition. You can't stop just and expect your faith to grow. You can't do nothing and expect your faith to grow. You have to keep taking action. And that's one of the hardest things about faith is, is just you know, keep, is, is working towards something that you don't see the results. And that's what stops a lot of people from being successful and reaching their fulfillment, life fulfillment and, and potential in life is because nowadays a lot of people just want things now. So they want their results now. If you know, if they don't get the, if the first option doesn't work, the option that they really, really wanted, they can, they're not. You know, they don't have confidence in themselves to find another option and figure out a way how to utilize the second or third option to still find a way to get their ultimate goal in life. And like I said, I didn't get a scholarship in high school, but I made it determined to myself that I was going to get a scholarship. I came to Hyder City College. I played two years. I played two years uh, under Coach Rush. Uh, there was a good. I, mean, I love playing football for uh, for City College, and I was able to earn myself a scholarship. And when I earned myself a scholarship, that literally blew my mind. Like I couldn't believe it. Like I could. Well, I mean, I, I did believe it because I was working for it. But I just couldn't believe that. Wow, I came from Tonga here, and made not only and, and able to earn myself a scholarship. Like I was able to come here. And play a game that I've never played my whole life. I was I was late to it, but I was still able to earn a scholarship than kids that grew up their whole life in America that knew the game, that they, they played the game since they were kids, and I, I was out to I was able to outperform them and still be able to earn a scholarship, while most kids, you know, a lot of kids like never get a scholarship, and that and that was just and that was just through hard work and dedication. And when I earned that scholarship, when I earned that scholarship to go. To go to college, I realized that that's when I started realizing that hard work, you know, hard work uh, is with hard work, anything is possible. That's that, I think that's that's when I, that's when it, it's hard work and uh, that belief became one of my part of my core values that I can achieve anything in my life if I work for it. I came here to America. I worked. Uh, I, I didn't. I wanted to grow my body. I worked at it. I grew from one. 105 to 245, 250. I, I wanted to get a scholarship. I worked at it, and two years later, after high school, I was able to earn a scholarship, a full scholarship to go play football in uh, in Hampton, Virginia. And and that's something I think because of that process, it 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 opened my mind of what's possible in my life that I can achieve anything. Because it, it was just crazy for me to to. You know, to be able to create my own destiny, my you know, my my family didn't have the money to take me to college, and I figured out my own way. I, I carved out my own path, uh, to find a scholarship to be successful, and I, I didn't allow my circumstances. I didn't allow my my situation. I didn't sit down and wander, and cry and dwell and blame. You know, how come I was born poor? How come I was born into this situation? How come I can't go to college? I just I figured out a way to do it on my own. And when I was able to do that for myself at a really young age, uh, right after high school, that became something that I started to believe in, my, one of my core values and principles in life. And honestly, the people that are successful, they're just people that have different core values and principles they live by than most people. And that's, when, that, that's how I started to develop uh, faith within myself. That's how I was able to uh, build my faith. And then, of course, I went to high school. Um, I'm sorry. I went to college. I played. I uh, was able to go to college. I didn't graduate. I, uh, I didn't graduate college. Um, just let you know, by the way. Um, I didn't graduate college. Um, that was on me. <laughs> but um, that's another. That's another. <laughs> that's another story. That's another. Uh, that's another vlog I need to talk about. But, but you know, after college. But just just the fact I went to college was all I needed to kind of build my faith within myself that I can achieve anything, you know. Uh, I wasn't able to do what I needed to do in college. You know, every, everybody has their mistakes and uh, flaws, and I need to take accountability for that. Um, but I was able to go to college. Uh, my last year, I, I left early. I came back home. Um, 
I remember telling everybody in my family that, that I graduated, which I feel bad for. But like I said, I was just, you know, I was just, I didn't want to feel the shame of not graduating. But at this point in my life, I'm proud that I didn't graduate because that just added another chip on my shoulder that, you know what, just because I didn't graduate college doesn't mean I'm not going to be successful. So after I graduated college, uh, came back to the real world, everybody was telling me, you know what, if you don't graduate, you're not going to, you can't be successful. If you don't graduate, you know, you're not going to, you can't make it in life. You know, you're going to be poor or work minimum wage jobs for the rest of your life. And that just added fuel to my fire. And of course, I had at that point in my life that I, you know, I, I proved to myself twice already in my life that I, I can achieve something that I've never done before. And I can achieve something that most people tell me that I cannot do. So that's already become an identity, a part of my identity that I can do anything if I'm willing to put in the work and time and commitment. So I made a dedication to myself, you know what, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to find a, a career, a good paying job, and I'm going to make something of my life. And that's when I started looking for a job after high school. And, you know, when I started looking for jobs, a lot of people just was telling me just to go out there and just be like every other Polynesian and to work the same jobs like all Polys do, like the most common jobs that you know, a lot of our people do, which is like yate, uh, working at the airport or security. Or, or And like I said, there's nothing wrong with those jobs. But for me, the way it wasn't, good, it wasn't the best option for me. It's not what I wanted to do. Because like I told you, like I said, like I came to America to make something about my, about my life. I came here to be successful. So I started looking around for jobs, applying online for Craigslist, and I found this job online. It was a uh, sales job, a door-to-door sales job. And it said that I was able to, you know, control my income. It was commission-based. I was able to uh, control my income, and that's something that attracted me to work there. And I went and applied for the job. I got the job. And and just and just let you know, at that time in my life, when I after high school, um, my my speaking skills was was terrible. <laughs> Physically, I was good, but like uh, uh, verbally, uh, when it came to speaking. Because by by my nature, I'm I'm an introvert. Like I know a lot of people don't believe that, because I'm a people person. But it's just because I've I've learned the skill of talking and communicating with people. And plus, I know is, uh, it's all you know. It's it's relationships are very important. You know, to be successful in life, you have to network and you have to build great relationships. So that's why I'm not afraid to talk to people, because I know it's important to know people to connect with the right people to succeed. You can't you know close mouths don't get fed. But I remember at that time I, I didn't even like speaking. Um, I was not confident in my in my in public speaking. But um, and so when I went to the job and got the job at door to door sales, I was like, I, I I remember going back home. I was like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> I'm about to I'm about to do door to door sales to go to people's doors. I told myself at that time, like, well, is that even a real profession? <laughs> I was like doubting myself, and I told myself like, can I even talk to people? I don't even like talking to people. And I, I don't, I'm really uncomfortable talking to people, but I, but it was really, but for me, I had to tell myself, you know what, I gotta just, you know, I gotta trust myself and believe in myself. And uh, also, for me, like you know, one thing I always pride myself uh, and always give credit to everything that I achieve in my life is just thanking God for everything in my life. I know God had, you know, just because I'm just very grateful that you know I grew up with my grandma. She, even though she was a Nazi, <laughs> of to live lucky. But she instilled the faith in me to believe in myself that if you believe in God and you do your best, you know, you don't have to be perfect, but she told me, just do your best and just make sure your, your intentions are pure. You know, don't worry. She always, she always, you know, one thing about my grandma, she just didn't care. She just didn't give up. <laughs> I loved about her. She was just unapologetic about being herself. My grandma would say, she was a very direct person. She would say what she feels like. And her own intention, she she always made it clear to anybody she met. She didn't care about how people felt. Uh, she just told the truth, the honest truth. And sometimes that truth was was brutal to some people, and a lot of people hate her uh, because of it. But you know, one thing I, in one of my favorite quotes, I think Stephen Jackson uh, always said, you know, people hate the truth. People who hate the truth, uh, people. What was that? What did he say? Oh, the truth, the truth sounds like hate to people who hate the truth. So if you hate the truth, the truth will always sound like hate. But that's what I love about my grandma. You know, she, she always told me, she, did, she was unapologetic about her faith. And she always told me, look, just believe in God. Do, you know, make sure you try to keep a, a narrow path, a narrow life. 
do your best, love him as much as you can, try to give thanks to him and do good things to people. And he and she said, I promise you. She told me, I promise you, God will always take care of you. And she and and if you, and I got one of one of these days, I'm gonna make a podcast uh, talking about what my grandma went through because my grandma went through so much. And she was a widow. She had seven to eight kids, and she literally supported not only her kids but literally like thirty to fifty people, uh, other people's kids. Like I told you, she really cared about her neighbors, and she was able to support that all on her own. But that's another story. But the fact that she did that—that that was an inspiration for me. And her faith is ridiculous. And so, that was I fed off. I fed off. I fed off that energy. And just watching my grandma achieve all the things she did in my life. And when she told me that, she always told me, look, God will always take care of me. And I just have to believe and put in the work. And she said, you have to work for it. So, and that's something that I realized for me is just, uh, you know, for me, it's just like I always believed in that. Uh, So twice in my life, I was able to achieve, you know, I was able to build my, you know, I was able to go from a scrawny kid to a physically built, uh, gain physical strength. I was able to get a scholarship. And that proved to me that, you know, so you got to realize so many things had to happen, right, for those things to happen. Like, you know, f- for me to come to America, you know, what are the chances of that happening, right? Uh, for me to play high school and not get injured, to play college ball and not get injured. Uh, for me, you know, not to run into the wrong people. Because, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes along the way, but every single situation I ran into in my life, I'm always able to figure out a way, and then I truly believe it's it's not myself. It's like God always figured out a way for me to to make the right decision, even though if I made the wrong decisions, He always guided me. So that also gave faith, just you know, added fire to my own faith within myself that I can achieve anything, and that's really really possible. And that's one of my favorite scriptures in in the Bible. You know, it says, I you know, uh, faith doesn't make your life easier, but f- faith does make things possible in your life. So, of course. And uh, so when I started, so of course, you know, even though when I started working at door-to-door sales, you know, I wasn't confident in myself, but, you know, I've, but I've, I trusted God. I mean, I believe, you know, God has got me this far. You know, sometimes in life, you know, we're all going to doubt ourselves. We're all going to, you know, doubt our own ability and, you know, we're all going to lose hope sometimes. And, you know, we're all going to have anxiety and, and feel discouraged. That's part of life. You know, we all feel we're human. We're going to feel those uh, those type of emotions, but... Um, but you always have to believe that things will always work out if you're willing to put in the work. And even and like I said, sometimes you gotta look back at your life and look at how far you come. Sometimes people get discouraged because, like, no, a they don't they can't see uh, a clear vision of the future of the results of what they want for their life, or b you know what they want out of the, for their life is just so far away. It just looks like it's like a mirage in the, in the horizon. They just believe that there's no way possible they can make it that far. Um, but sometimes, like I say, instead of looking how far you have to go in life, just look how far you've came in life, and that can give you inspiration to keep going. So when I was able to, so when I decided to and uh, to do door to door sales as my first official career, I decided, you know, instead of looking how far I have to go in life, I kind of just look look back and about how far I came in life. You know, I came from Tonga all the way to America. I came to America. I figured out how to way to go to to uh, learn the language. I figured out how to way to learn how to play football. I figured out a, my own way of getting my own scholarship to go play football. You know, that's like most a lot of you know most a lot, a lot of people, a lot of kids don't even get a chance to go to college or don't even get a chance to earn a scholarship. But I was able to achieve that. The things that were impossible, that was impossible in my life, I was able to make it possible just through just through sheer faith and belief and hard work. So, just because I was able to see, I was just because, just because, just because of that, and I was able to look back in my life, I was like, you know, I didn't come this far only to come this far. I told myself that. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna try this opportunity. I'm going to door to door sales. I'm gonna make it happen. I'll make it work, and I'm going to make a, and I'm going to make something of myself, and become a successful. Just because I don't have a college degree does not mean I'm not going to be successful. And I told myself that every single day, and I believed that, and of course I let. Everything into God's hand, God's hands to, to guide me in the right direction, and and just it's crazy enough. I uh, got the job, and what happened was I I truly excelled at my job, and uh, I actually broke when I when I worked for the sales job. It was an energy company. 
uh, I literally broke the uh, most amount of sales in one day and I literally broke the most amount of sales in one week and I actually broke the, the record for the most amount of money you can make in a week at that job and within the first six months working there. I was able to uh, uh, win the award for top salesperson that they give out uh, twice uh, back to back. And a lot of people were looking at me like it was like I was crazy. But like, like who is this kid that's coming in? You know, big, dark, tall, dark dude, Polynesian. And for me, it's just like, it's just, and people always ask me, how do you do it? How do you, how, how are you able to go make the, all these sales? And I just tell them, it's just faith and self-belief, man. That's just hard work. I just went out there every single day. People that are in, they're, they're in sales, they know how hard it is to work in sales. We get rejected every single day. We get screamed at every single day by customers. People yell at us every single day. So you got to have thick skin. You got to have perseverance. You got to have a, a mental toughness to be able not to handle those emotions and rejections. And, I, and I'm very glad that you know, door-to-door sales really taught me a lot of lessons, especially when it comes to perseverance and especially when it comes, when it comes to dealing with rejection because that's just one of the most important skills to learn in life is, ha- is how to handle rejection because you're going to get rejected in life more times than you're going to succeed if you're trying to become successful in your life. And uh, like I said, I became you know, I became a superstar in my job and I was rising up the, la- the ranks and then I was able to earn myself to become a sales manager in a year and a half. But I don't want to spend my time talking about you know my own career, but I want to get back to focus of faith and self-belief. But I just want to, but that's pretty much what I want to share in this video. Uh, that, in that part of your journey in my life, this is why I have so much faith in myself and like I mentioned earlier in the, the first video, you know, I, when I, I worked at door-to-door sales for seven years, uh, and like I said, 2020 this year, I decided to leave that behind me and focus full-time on working towards my dream, dream to be a life coach and be a motivational speaker to help inspire other people to do better in their life. And that's my ultimate goal right now. And that's why I have so much faith in myself right now that I can become a life coach. I can uh, be a great motivational speaker that I can... If I put in the work, I can rise in uh, in my platforms of social media and and different platforms. I can I can find a, I can carve my own destiny. All all those great po- all, for all those like great speakers like uh, Tony Robbins, Gary V, Les Miles, uh, Les Miles, uh, Eric Thomas, um, Jim Rohn. Like I really believe in myself that I can get up there. I can be part of that group. And a lot of people might say that's crazy, but a lot of people will say you're. You're Polynesian, you're not going to make it, your chance of ever making it, but people just don't know, like, I've made it this far, I didn't come this far, only to come this far, and everything I've ever achieved in my life was in uh, things that I thought was impossible, I was able to make it possible, just straight, straight, straight determination, hard work, and, and my faith in God, and that, has, that hasn't failed me so far in my life, and I know, you know, the more things I want out of life, the bigger my dream, the bigger the grind I have to put in, and the bigger the faith I have to believe in myself, and the great thing about me is I'm willing to pay that price because everything in life, there's a price for it. And you, you know, the bigger, you, the more things you want out of life, the bigger your dream is. You just gotta, it's gonna require more of yourself. But the question is, are you ready to sacrifice who you are for who you will become? This is one of my favorite Eric Thomas quotes. So, and that's why I am to. That's why I am who I am today. That's why I have so much faith in myself and belief in myself. That's why like, I have no doubt I'm going to make it. I'm going to carve out my own way. Even though I'm just working on my own right now, I don't, have, uh, you know, I don't really have a mentor. I do work with a mentor right now, like you know, with Coach V. Shout out, shout out to Coach V. But you know, I, I'm going to figure out a way, and I'm going to become successful. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm going to be one of those great speakers that's going to travel the world and talk to in front of billions of people and help as much people as I can because I truly believe that's, truly believe that's my purpose in life. And... I know there's a lot of doubters out there. I know, I know there's a lot of people that don't believe me. A lot of people think I'm crazy. But, you know, anybody that was the first to do anything in life were all considered crazy until they did it. It's always impossible until it's done. So, like you said, also, and of course, I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing for all Polynesian kids that's going to come before me. Like, I have this burden I want to I carry that. Because I know what it feels like to be average. I know what it feels like to be a small, skinny, uh, afraid kid. I know what it feels like to have no confidence in myself. I know what it feels like to be afraid. I know what it feels like for people to tell tell you that you can't be anything in life. That you're just going to be a uh, 
become a you're just gonna be a normal average kid. You know, you know they don't expect anything out of you because you're because you're from the islands. You're a fob. You know, coming to America, people tell you, oh, you're just an island kid. You're a fob. You're not gonna amount to anything. People don't expect a much amount. Much amount. A lot of people don't expect a lot from immigrants and from Tongans. But you know what? I I take that burden. I take that challenge, and I'm willing to pay the price. And I'm willing to put in the work. And I'm willing to do whatever it, it takes to be successful. And it doesn't matter how much what I have to go through, adversity, or whatever. It doesn't matter how much negativity I have to face within my own family or friends or a congregation, just society. That I'm going to figure out a way because I've always found a way to figure it out in my whole life. And I know God is, is with me. And I know doesn't, nothing's going to stop me if I'm willing to put in the work. And the only way, that's, the only way to stop me is if I quit or, or I die. And that's just my mentality. So that's why I wanted to make this video for all you guys out there. Remember, just like I said, I didn't start out with this faith. It's just faith is something you have to work on every single day. And it's like a muscle. You're just going to keep working at it. It takes a lot of work. But what, what, what happens is as you put in the work, you're going to, I promise you, if you put in the work and, you know, you believe in God and you do the right things and you do, uh, you do the right by people, you know, you don't, you know, you don't treat people like shit and you don't, uh, you know, you don't burn bridges and you don't do bad things to other people. If you do things the right way, the universe will always find a way to give it to you and God will always find a way to give it to you if, if you believe that you deserve it. And a lot of people don't become successful. A lot of people don't reach their potential because they just believe they don't deserve it, right? And one thing about life, we always get what we deserve, right? If you don't believe you deserve it, you're not going to get it. But if you do believe you deserve it and you're willing to commit yourself to it and put in the work, anything is possible. It doesn't matter. What ethnicity, color, race, skin color, the Polynesian, Melanesian, Chinese, Asian, it doesn't matter. Anybody can achieve anything if you're willing to put in the work and you believe in yourself that you can achieve it. So that's, that's it. I want to share with you guys uh, my thoughts on my faith and self-belief and how I develop my faith and how and the reason why I have so much faith in myself. And uh, if I, I know if I can do it, <clears throat> if I can do it, I don't know you can do it too because the one thing about life we can't control a lot of things in life there's so many things we can't control but the only thing but the only thing that you can control in life is always the effort you put in every single day so that's all it is for everybody out there just put into work I promise you uh, the, the results will eventually come no matter how bad your life is no matter your situation I guarantee you that better days are always coming as long as you put in the work don't give up don't give in get a reward from it remember pain is temporary but giving up is forever. But brothers and sisters, love all you guys. Let's walk by faith, not by sight. Let's spread the love and positivity. Say blessed. Alpha Peace.